Turkey has consistently declined to pursue the Russian Su-57 fighter jet, and this decision is based on a combination of technical shortcomings, strategic misalignment, and geopolitical consequences. Despite Russia's repeated offers and public signaling that it is willing to sell the aircraft, Turkey has not taken any formal steps toward purchasing it. The decision is grounded in practical defense priorities and a sober assessment of the Su-57's limitations, not political loyalty or religious alliances. From a technical standpoint, the Su-57 has failed to meet the expectations of a fully operational fifth-generation fighter. Although officially designated as such by Russia, many independent defense analysts argue that the aircraft falls short in several core performance areas. Stealth capability remains unproven in real-world scenarios. The airframe incorporates radar cross-section reduction features, but unlike the F-35 or F-22, it lacks key design elements such as full internal weapons bays for all mission loads, advanced coating technologies, and precise angular shaping optimized for minimal radar detection. Additionally, the Su-57's infrared signature and noise suppression measures are behind the standards set by Western designs. These limitations raise questions about its survivability in high-end combat against peer adversaries. The aircraft's propulsion system is another major concern. As of mid-2025, the Su-57 continues to rely on the AL-41 F-1 engines, which are essentially modified variants of older designs used in the Su-35. The next-generation Isdali A-30 engine, intended to provide greater thrust, better fuel efficiency, and true supercruise capability, is still undergoing flight testing and has not been widely integrated into operational units. This significantly limits the Su-57's ability to perform as a true fifth-generation multirole aircraft, especially in sustained air superiority missions where power-to-weight ratio and low observability are critical. Production timelines and delivery capabilities also continue to lag. Russia has only produced a limited number of Su-57s, with estimates suggesting that fewer than 40 aircraft are in service, and many of these are test or pre-serial production units. Russia's defense industry is under strain from international sanctions, domestic resource constraints, and the prioritization of resources toward its ongoing war in Ukraine. These factors cast doubt on Russia's ability to meet export obligations or deliver a sustained support package for international customers like Turkey. This is a key consideration, as acquiring an advanced fighter jet isn't just about purchase, it requires long-term commitments to training, spare parts, upgrades, and logistics support. Strategically, integrating the Su-57 into the Turkish Air Force would create significant challenges. Turkey operates a fleet that is almost entirely based on NATO standard platforms. Its command and control systems, data links like Link-16, air defense networks, and weapons are all interoperable with Western allies. Introducing a Russian aircraft like the Su-57 would create a parallel system that does not integrate with existing infrastructure. It would require separate training for pilots and ground crews, a new maintenance ecosystem, and custom-built support infrastructure, all of which would be costly, time-consuming, and inefficient. Moreover, purchasing the Su-57 would carry heavy political and economic consequences. Under the United States countering America's adversaries through Sanctions Act CATSA, countries that procure major defense articles from Russia risk triggering economic and military sanctions. Turkey has already experienced this firsthand after purchasing the Russian S-400 air defense system, which led to its removal from the F-35 program and froze access to certain American defense technologies. Acquiring the Su-57 would likely escalate tensions further with the United States and European Union, potentially restricting access to spare parts for existing platforms like the F-16 and harming Turkey's domestic defense industry, which is heavily interlinked with Western suppliers. While some Russian media and officials have tried to promote the idea that Turkey might turn to the Su-57 after being removed from the F-35 program, Turkish officials have consistently maintained a cautious position. While publicly stating that, all options are on the table, there has been no official request to examine, test fly, or purchase the Su-57. Statements by Turkish leadership mentioning the Su-57 are generally interpreted as diplomatic leverage in negotiations with Washington over aircraft upgrades or technology transfers, not as a sincere indication of a procurement shift. Instead of turning to Russia, Turkey has doubled down on two more strategically aligned paths. First, it has prioritized upgrading and expanding its F-16 fleet, seeking both modernization kits and new aircraft from the US, a deal which has recently made progress. Second, and more importantly, Turkey is heavily investing in its indigenous fifth-generation fighter program, 
the TFX, also known as Khan. This aircraft, being developed by Turkish Aerospace Industries, is designed to eventually replace the F-16 and offer greater sovereignty over the country's airpower. The TFX program is technologically ambitious but aligns with Turkey's long-term goals, achieving strategic independence, building up its defense industrial base, and maintaining interoperability with NATO systems. In contrast, the Su-57 offers little in the way of technology transfer, industrial collaboration, or long-term reliability. Russia has been unwilling to share core technologies with its own allies and has not proven capable of supporting large-scale foreign integration programs. Countries that previously showed interest, such as India, ultimately backed away from collaboration with Russia on the Su-57 due to similar concerns about lack of transparency, production delays, and inadequate stealth performance. Turkey's rejection of the Su-57 is a fact-based decision driven by aircraft performance issues, production unreliability, lack of integration with existing systems, and the strategic risks associated with further alignment with Russia. Far from being a political snub, it reflects a realistic assessment of the Su-57's current limitations and the broader geopolitical consequences that would come with such a purchase. The Su-57 may function as a bargaining chip in defense diplomacy, but it is not viewed as a viable operational platform by Turkish defense planners.